Joining me now is Kyle Bass, Haven Capital Management's founder and CIO. Kyle, it's great to have you back. Welcome. Kelly, great, great to be here. I, I think that uh, the, the, the hype of this, of this discussion uh, is, is a bit off. Uh, what, what, I literally said that in, in kind of a, a, a long two-hour interview with Bloomberg's editorial crew, uh, where I think downtown office space uh, and I've referred to very much B and C buildings. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not sure how B and C buildings revive, but you know, even A buildings, you showed Vernado being down, you know, 70, 72% over call it the last four years. I agree with Seth. And as you probably know, uh, in San Francisco, 350 California street just traded for, you know, $60 uh, a square foot, uh, which, you know, you can't, you can't even come close to building a building for that. But the bet is from here that at some point in time, you actually get uh, millennials to move back into the office. Um, I know it's a tough slog, but you know, there's BNC office buildings in downtown areas that have been decimated uh, by uh, crime and, and, and again, vacancies. I think, I think this is a decade long problem. The A buildings are gonna do fine. So how would you play it? You know, if you wanted to be really opportunistic, would you look at, for instance, Vornado? I mean, it's interesting what they're doing because they're picking a big renovation, spending a billion dollars cash, not debt, all the rest of it, right next to Penn Station, as if to say the only way there might be hope is by getting people on mass transit, you know, really close to their destination and maybe luring them back in that way, because this is way more about the commute, especially with congestion pricing about to happen than it is about anything else. Yeah, and uh, look, this, go this goes even further into bad governance. You look at the cities. Uh, that have the worst uh, office vacancy rates. And those are also the cities that have some of the highest crime rates in the downtown area. So, you know, this pendulum that's swinging is a secular change in work, um, you know, primarily driven by COVID uh, and, and then people's uh, proclivities to want to stay home and convince their employers they should stay home. And then you also have governance and bad governance in many of these cities. And to your point, mass transit, uh, you know, I wouldn't ride mass transit in many of these cities today. I think it's too dangerous. And I think they're going to have to have governance be fixed. You're going to have to have uh, um, these downtown areas rejuvenated. And some of these cities is going to be a, a tough go for, for decades sure. to come. But that said, you know, I know you and Seth, I mean, these. so do you buy Vornado at 17, for instance, and say, you know what, maybe they can get to 30, maybe they can get to 40, maybe this is, you know, you want to buy the stock before you start to see the turnaround to some extent, or maybe you believe they're in, uh, exposed to areas that will kind of come out of this. Um, maybe there's other ways to do it. Maybe especially someone like yourself can just maybe buy a, an, a property directly, right? Or be part of some, some kind of private credit deal. What's the play? Yeah, I think the play, given where debt costs are, and, and, and look, Seth is, Seth is a, a much better value investor than I, and he's, and he's an icon <laughs> in the space. And yeah. as you know, in his book, Margin of Safety, mm -hmm. he likes to create margins of safety. And that, that, that example I talked about, 350 California, the buyer uh, you know, paid $60 million for that asset. Asset was worth, you know, $300 million plus just a couple of years ago. Uh, and the, the buyer paid all cash for it and, and, and has the uh, timeline to wait it out. So when I'm thinking about how to, how to play a, an asset class like office, uh, I think you want to buy individual properties and I think you want to pay all cash for them. And you also need to have a, a decade long or more uh, time horizon. Uh, and the whole idea is if you're buying it at 20, 25 percent of replacement cost at some point in time in the future, things will get back to some sense of what what's deemed to be normal. Uh, and that building will be worth a lot more than $60 a foot. Right. Uh, if, it, if it ends up being worth one hundred twenty dollars a foot, it's still a third of what it once was worth. But it's that's a double from here. So right. I think it's I think taking debt out of the equation with debt costs where they are today is key to, to playing something uh, like a, a value purchase here.